will be solving this problem called counting divisors. So we are given n integers and our task is to report for each integer the number of its divisors. For example, if x is equal to 18, the correct answer is 6 because its divisors are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. So the first line of the input contains an integer n that can be as large as 10 to the fifth then follow uh, n integers that can be as large as a million and for each integer we have to output the number of divisors so let's go to the drawing board and analyze this problem so this was our example let's go ahead and try to find the number of divisors for each number and in order to do that let us introduce a famous theorem in arithmetic and that is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic so let's say what this theorem is about. So the fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every integer greater than 1 either is a prime number itself or can be represented as a product of prime numbers and that moreover this representation is unique and that's very important. So given any number like here uh, 1200 we can represent this as 2 raised to the fourth power times 3 times 5 squared and if we order the prime factors uh, in increase on order this representation is unique so let's go ahead and factor our numbers in this manner so this will be equal to 2 raised to the fourth power 17 is a prime number so it would be just equal to 17 and 18 is 2 times 9, so 2 times 3 raised to the second power. Great! Now we want to find the number of divisors of 16. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Can 3 be a divisor of 16? And the answer is no, because 3 does not show up in the factorization of 16. In other words, any divisor of 16 can has to belong to this list and since 2 is the only prime factor of 16 then any divisor I come up with can only contain 2 and the second question I would ask you can 2 raised to the 7th power for example be a divisor of 16 and the answer is again no because uh, 16 is equal to 2 to the 4th and thus the largest power a divisor of 16 can have is 4. So basically all divisors of 16 will be of the form 2 raised to some alpha and alpha is between 0 and 4 included. It can be equal to 0 and that's the case where uh, the divisor is equal to 1. 1 is indeed a divisor of 16 and it can be represented as 2 raised to the zeroth power and the maximum value alpha can take is 4. So basically uh, 16 will have 5 divisors that are 2 raised to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the second power, 2 to the third and 2 to the fourth. And it won't have any other divisor. The same goes for 17. So all the divisors of 17 can only contain 17 and the alpha here is between 0 and 1 because here it's stopped by 1 and therefore the number of divisors for 17 will be just 2 namely 1 and 17 what about 18 now our divisors can either contain a 2 or a 3 we have a choice here and we have two powers here alpha and beta and alpha here it can be anything between 0 and 1 whereas beta can be anything between 0 and 2 so here we have two choices for alpha and three choices for beta and since our choice of alpha is independent of our choice of beta then the total number of possibilities will be just the product of these two and consequently 18 will have 2 times 3 which is equal to 16 and consequently 18 would have 2 times 3 which is equal to 6 divisors 
and these are all the combination of two raised to some alpha times three raised to some beta where these are the constraints on alpha and beta so in general any number x that is equal to p1 raised to the alpha 1 times p2 raised to the alpha 2 times p3 raised to the alpha 3 times pn raised to the alpha 1 has a, a number of divisors that is equal to the product so divs is equal to the product we represent the product with pi here as we represent the sum with sigma so this is equal to the product from i equals 1 to n of alpha i plus 1 and we, we have a plus 1 here to account for the 0 so remember like here we had 4 and we had 5 divisors because 5 is equal to 4 plus 1 so basically this alpha i plus 1 is represents our choices for alpha 1 so for alpha 1 for example we can have 0 1 2 3 up to alpha 1 so the total number of choices is alpha i plus 1 and that's pretty much it our number of divisors will be just equal to this product and now all what is left is to find this factorization for the numbers that we will be given and as you may know there is an algorithm that runs in all of square root of n that finds all the factors of any given number so basically all what we have to do is go from i equals 2 up to square root of n i less than or equal to the square root of n and actually we don't use this uh, comparison because taking the square root of n requires the use of some function that takes the square root of n and introducing this may lead to uh, precision issues so instead we check that i squared is less than or equal to n so i times i is less than or equal to n i plus plus and for each value of i we check if n modulo i is equal to zero that is i divides n and if that's the case we will just keep dividing so while n modulo i is equal to 0 we'll keep dividing n by i and each time we will increment alpha so alpha plus plus alpha here representing our power and at the same time we will divide n by i and after we do this we just record this value of alpha and that's all what we're gonna require in our prob problem here but we can also re record this pair that is the prime number along with its exponent if we want to retrieve the whole factorization but in our problem here all what we are interested in is are uh, these values of alpha so we will require o of square root of n for finding this factorization and for this computation here for finding the product of the alphas in order to find our answer this won't require that much computation because the worst case is that our number here is composite that is it contains many prime numbers so the worst case is that our number looks something like 2 times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 and so on and since our number can be only as large as a million this can have at most a, a few prime factors so here if we add a few more we can see that having 10 or up to 20 is gonna go beyond 10 to the 6 pretty quickly so here we're gonna perform at most 20 to 30 multiplications so this won't account much for the for computing the complex for for our complexity so our total complexity will be square root of n plus whatever this is so let's say 30 plus uh, and all this times the number of queries we have here which can be up to 10 to the fifth so our total complexity here will be 10 to the third times 10 to the fifth which is about 10 to the eighth and this is within our threshold so we are fine now let's check out our code so this is our program we'll start by reading the number of queries we'll have to answer and then we'll process them and for each query we'll read our number 
and for each number we will declare a vector of int that will store the alphas that we mentioned so it's gonna store the powers of prime factors then we're gonna factorize our number so as we said we're gonna have a for loop that goes from 2 up to the square root of our number and we'll check for this by checking that i square is less than or equal to our number and each time we're gonna check if the number is divisible by i that is the number modulo i is equal to zero and if that's the case we're gonna declare our power that we're gonna keep incrementing and while the number is divisible by i we're gonna increment our power and divide the number by i and at the end we'll just push this power into our vector and when we are done we might have that the number is different from 1 so for example say that the number here is 17 17 is not divisible by any number that is uh, smaller than it or that is different than it because it is a prime number so at the end here we're gonna have that number is different from 1 and that's why we have to push 1 into our vector because it accounts for the power of 17 in the prime factorization of 17 whereas if we had some composite number here like let's say 4 we're gonna start with 2 and 2 times 2 is less than or equal to 4 and we're gonna find that 4 modulo 2 is indeed equal to 0 so we're gonna initialize our power with 0 and then while 4 is divisible by 2 then we're gonna increment our power once and divide 4 by 2 to get 2 and then again we're gonna have that 2 is divisible by 2 so we're gonna increment our power a second time and divide number by 2 and this time uh, the number is equal to 1 so when we get to this point we're gonna find that the number is indeed equal to 1 so we won't do anything so basically this is only applicable for numbers that are prime numbers or for for numbers that have a prime factor that is larger than its square root and at this point we would have gotten all the powers of prime factors of our number and all what we have to do now is to compute the answer and i'm gonna call it the number of divisors and i gonna initialize it with one then I'm gonna look through all the numbers in my powers of prime factors vector and I'm gonna multiply my answer by z plus 1 as we saw and at the end I'll just print the answer so that's pretty much it let's go ahead and submit so that worked thank you very much for watching see you in the next video bye bye